Hello, everybody. Happy Monday morning. It's your boy, Dave Neal. This is a motivational Monday. We're going to kickstart this day with some coffee. We're going to get in there. I've got a story about Tasha Adams glowing up and blowing up. We're going to talk about Zach Clark and the commencement speech he gave at his alma mater, talking about addiction and recovery, and also some words of wisdom from one Katie Thurston. This is going to be a good Monday start to the week. We've got only several weeks before Memorial Day. Can you believe it? It's almost summer 2021. June 7th, 2021 will be the start of Katie Thurston's season, uh, the Monday after Memorial Day, the official kickoff to summer. I know, summer doesn't start till the solstice, which is June 20th, not June 21st. It's like, listen there, Debbie. Summer starts when you get to wear white, okay? You know what I'm talking about? So we're going to talk about Tasha Adams' glow up this year because d- boy, has she ever had a glow up from being a divorcee. Let's just, you know what? Let's just do this. Let's go down her IMDb and just see where she came from this last year. She shows up out of nowhere in 2019, two short years ago. Oh, no, that's not. Yeah, that's right. On The Bachelor, which by the way, I mean, so let's say they filmed that in 2018. So in the last three years, she's gone from unknown, divorced from that guy who cheated on her and sort of blamed it on her. Kind of weird story there. Then The Bachelor doesn't work out because newsflash, Colton Underwood's not that into her, okay? So she still makes it pretty far in there. Everyone's like, we love Tasha." For all of the rejects that don't make it on the show, we're like, send them to Bachelor in Paradise. We want more of them. And they're like, thanks. I guess I get free drinks uh, with Jorge down at the beach. And then so she does Bachelor in Paradise. Uh, That doesn't necessarily end too well for her. Uh, But then then what happens? What happens? She does her rounds, Dish Nation, Ellen, AMA, this and that. And then all of a sudden, she's runner-up for 2020's Bachelorette. Oh, but they'll never use her. They've never used a runner-up before. The person usually goes to the end. Claire's like, hold my Cosmo. I got work to do. Two weeks into that season, Claire's out with Dale. They're hanging out on a beach, broken up, back together, doing their whole thing. And then Tasha takes over the season. Next thing you know, she wins an American uh, or uh, MTV award for, you know, best uh, reality TV show, which is like, uh, you know, winning award for like best uh, junior varsity, uh, you know, football player. It's like, nice, but what the hell is this league anyway? All right. So then let we, so then now that we got that under control, she, uh, you know, through, uh, <clears throat> through a world out of her control, ends up co-host of this coming season of The Bachelorette. Okay, you guys are all caught up to date. Now, it's one thing after another. I mean, we're talking like, I mean, there's never been a term, like glow up has applied to a lot of people before, but I think we can all agree, no one has glowed up the way that Tasha Adams has glowed up, just hanging out in New Mexico, newly, you should get that fresh co-host energy, ready to go. She got Zach Clark by her side, who seems to be an amazing dude. Dude's recovered from his own demons. He's there supporting her, you know, doesn't need to be in the limelight. As He's letting his lady shine. There's a good photo of them. You know, I'm just giving you guys some context if you're new to my channel here. So they're doing the damn thing. Then all of a sudden, we've got a, a spread for Cosmo. She shot this in like a La Quina I mean, she shot this in a hotel room. You know what I mean? She does her spread for Costco. She's in the pleather. She's ready to go. She's hanging out. She's not taking any prisoners. This she this is warfare, folks. This is this is print journalism warfare. She's looking great, showing off the shoulders, big clavicle energy, and then of course pulls home the hardware. What's the point of an award show if you're not coming home with hardware? Put that in the Uber pool. So she gets the hardware, she's doing her thing, and then that takes us to this video. I gotta play some music here because I can't play the licensed music um, that she has. She's got um, New York State of Mind by Alicia Keys, which by the way, I gotta tell you, New York State of Mind came on as I moved to New York, and you could see New York in the skyline as I was driving into New York. If you don't like New York, it's because you never lived there. I get it. You don't want to, when you visit there, you go to Times Square, you're in an M&M store. Like, this city stinks. I understand. But when you live there, when you tap into the energy in New York, when you glow up the way that Tasha's glowing up, you walk by a building and you see your own print advertising in Cosmo on the side of the building. Let's read her caption right here. There she is. Look at that. She's doing the she's doing the runway walk down the sidewalk. They framed out all the people probably, you know, uh, pissing into a garbage can or whatever they do in New York. It's not the cleanest city, but I live in L.A., so what do I know? Uh, so there it is. She's getting the whole... Look at there she is. Her own gigantic walkable billboard spread right there. How amazing is that? There's the face. There's the glow up we're looking at. So what's the motivation here? What's the takeaway? That maybe you could become co-host of Bachelorette? No, no, no. That's not the... The takeaway is you live your life 
you live it with a high frequency. You laugh when it's time to laugh. You you just you just keep moving forward. You know, she could have spiraled out of control and been like, oh, what was me? My marriage didn't work out this or that. No, she kept her cool. It doesn't, you know, hurt that she's got great cheekbones and uh, bone structure and she's beautiful. But uh, she's got the charm, folks. So there she is living her best life. Let's read her statement here. You got to post it. You got to post a good statement. This is, uh, you know, you maybe even type it on your computer, copy, paste into a notepad, whatever. But uh, Instagram, you know, you got to post a little scribe. So she writes, this is so surreal to me. Never did I ever think my life would be what it is today. I've recently been reminded to start my days with gratitude because although there can be tough days, there is so much to be thankful for, and this little moment was proof. I'm on the side of the Hearst building, y'all. Ah, thank you to a follower for tagging me in her stories. While seeing this, I had no idea. Much love, y'all. Thank you, Cosmopolitan. And then, of course, she gets all the uh, check marks. Yes, queen, bad. Yeah, woo. Oh, my gosh, you crazy. I can't believe, you know. All, and, you know, rightfully so. Yeah, get it, girl. And she did. She get it. She got it. She good. So she's over there doing her thing. Good for her. That's excellent. Amazing. So happy for her. And it's only the start. More to come from her. Let's turn that side music off. Now we're going to move over to Katie, which is interesting because Katie's at the beginning of her glow up. I just realized my... um. Hold on one second here. I just realized my subtitles were all off. God forbid you can't find my Instagram over there at Neils. So here's Katie, right? Now she's she's on a different side of things where she's already taped her show. She doesn't necessarily know exactly how she'll be perceived. She's being criticized for, for every step she makes. I mean, truly, you know, she posts a photo with a girl. She's queer baiting. You know, maybe rightfully so, but she's criticized in ways as a as a anonymous person in the world, you wouldn't understand because you can post things and not have public feedback or this or that. Uh, she's had the pressure on her shoulders before her season even started. Um, I, I don't know this for sure, but I can only imagine people were like bo- saying they were going to boycott her, but unless she denounced Chris Harrison, I mean, from the start of the, of things, she's been embroiled in a sort of divorce battle for her season. So just be fair to her. She has nothing to do with any of that. She's just a, a bank manager from the uh, Pacific Northwest trying to find love. Aren't we all? So she, um, post this on her Instagram story. Let's play this one second here. Let me turn that music down and then we'll play what she posted about happiness and how you can maintain that happiness. This question, but on the next few slides as I just rant away on my thoughts. The short answer though is yes. I think with happiness, it's not something that you have, but something you create and it's something you have to create daily. And that is, I think, the biggest thing I'm learning right now is how to be happy. That includes eliminating bad people from your life. That includes not reading the comments for me. That includes seeing the doctor, which I'm going to go do on Monday um, about anxiety. You know, um, figuring out routines and how to surround yourself with what is best for you. And with it being Mental Health Awareness Month, I just thought it would be, I don't know, I thought I'd just be open. You know, like everyone thinks I have this like great, exciting life, and I do, but there's a lot of hardship that comes with it, and I'm just always going to want to be transparent with you guys and just share my struggles and my successes as I figure things out as we go. I'll just say this, and that's great, great wisdom from Katie Thurston, because I don't care if you're Prince Harry. Happiness doesn't follow you with money. It doesn't follow you with prestige. It's something you have to continuously create. There are, find me some happy billionaires. I mean, seriously, seriously. If millionaires aren't happy. And I know it's these, oh, I could buy some happiness. I could, I totally get it, buying yourself some more time. But when you get the thing that you are pushing for and it doesn't fix what you think it will fix, you then realize you need to fill it with something else. I think what Katie's going to learn is she's had her dreams answered. The show pays you over a quarter million dollars and she's going to get exposure that's going to also monetize her. So she's, I don't want to say set for life, but set in a way where she's far beyond her 30 years old. She's set in that way. But that doesn't fill the the thing that makes you happy. And I think she realized that it's a daily thing. Just like Tasha mentioned, you need gratitude on a daily basis. You need to start your day with gratitude and end your day with gratitude. Not toxic gratitude, like, oh, everything will be okay. I should be happy. Feel your feelings. But anxiety is fear over the unknown versus fear, which is fear over things that have already happened. Like you're afraid of spiders. 
but do you have anxiety that they might attack you? There's a different, I don't know if that made sense, but there's a difference there. And I can understand the anxiety of not knowing how your season's going to go. What's up next for you? What, like, there's so many unknowns that I can only imagine can provide, can I, can I carry this season? I mean, ABC is one of the biggest networks in the world and she's on one of the biggest cash cow shows on that show as the lead. How will she perform? All these things that are out of her control. You just need to find a mantra that works for you. I am enough. I have enough. I want to share it. Find a mantra. I'm happy. I'm healthy. I'm wealthy. Whatever the mantra might be, Google one. And if you and, and say that thing until it's in your subconscious. It sounds kind of corny, but that's the way it works. Our brain, I'll just say this about, about this topic. Our brain is meant to ruminate. And it, 99% of our thoughts that we have are repetitive thoughts. Oh, I'm not enough. I'm not enough. My mom's going to be mad. I'm this. And you repeat the same things over and over. And the more you repeat the negative, the far the farther you could fall into it. So I don't know if it's a tattoo you need on you, a Sharpie, a morning journal, something, you know, a post-it note on the way out the door in your car, something to remind yourself that you are the badass personality that chose this human experience from millions of souls out there. They said, I'm going to do this one. Earth is hard. It can be a hard challenge um, if, if you know, we choose only what we can handle. We put enough food on our plate, okay? So whenever, you know, I've got people in my live stream that I've had this conversation with, whenever you think that it's too much, it's not. It's what you can handle, and it's to teach you a lesson on life. And if you failed that lesson, well, true failure is quitting. So if you failed a lesson, you'll get that lesson over and over, whether it's dating the same a-hole, getting the same job, not getting the respect you want at work. You're going to get that lesson over and over until you champion it and say, I am enough, I have enough, and I want to share it in a way that's better than what I'm doing right now in, in, in servicing yourself in that type of way. And that includes things like eating healthy and all these other things, folks. So anyway, good on Katie for sharing that. We really appreciate it. I'm going to play this uh, entire commencement speech from Zach Clark. So if you want to stick around for this, fine. It's nine minutes long. I'm going to play it uninterrupted. This is Zach Clark speaking the commencement of his alma mater, York College of Pennsylvania. And of course, if you're new to us, Zach is the... Uh, lucky man in Tasha's life. She chose him over better looking guys, younger guys, probably wealthier guys. She chose the addiction specialist, the guy who went to hell and back and recovered from his own demons. Why? Probably because she understood it, having had the guys in her past relationships that might have been Mr. Right. She probably understood like this guy's secure in who he is. This guy knows what's important in life and values that. And this guy's doing the Lord's work by sharing his story with others. Let's listen to Zach Clark. Class of 2021, what is up? It is an honor to be with you guys today. I have to start by thanking uh, Dr. Pamela Gunther Smith and the rest of the leadership team at York College, really the whole, the whole York College nation. It's been awesome to reconnect with you guys over this past year. And I also, I have to shout out the families who are participating in this commencement uh, virtually. I know for a fact, family for me was key uh, during my college experience. And I would have to guess that of those of you who are here with me today, at some point in your college career, there was definitely a moment where you had to lean on family or your support system or your loved ones to get you through that first breakup or that first failed test or whatever it, it might have been. So shout out to them. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Zach Clark. I'm a 2006 graduate of York College. Uh, during my time there, I studied sport management. I uh, played baseball for four years under the tutelage of uh, Paul Sykea, who uh, I still uh, take with me a lot of his teachings into my daily life today and I proudly lived on Jackson Street, 258 Jackson Street for three of those four years. So I look back at my time at York College fondly, uh, hoping the, the same type of memories that you all will take with you. It really breaks my heart that I'm not with you guys today in person, uh, you know, but if life, my life and the last year has taught me anything it is really to make the most out of the opportunities that we are given. When I was asked to speak uh, and be the commencement speaker, I did a double take, I must admit, because uh, not in my wildest dreams did I ever think that I would be in this position. But I shortly after that said yes. 
And I said yes, because it is an honor uh, to be with you today. As I began to think about what I wanted to talk to the class of 2021 about, um, I thought about this group of graduates and I couldn't help but think about really the ways that you all have been robbed of that traditional college experience. I mean, we're talking about uh, canceled sports seasons, uh, virtual learning and virtual classes. It's been a challenge for sure. And you guys have um, dealt with more than I can probably uh, imagine. But then I realized that this group of graduates is actually more prepared to go out into the real world than any class that has really come before them. Because the class of 2021 has been forced to do things a little differently. You all have forced to, uh, been forced to be problem solvers. You've been forced to get creative. You've been forced to stay connected to each other in ways that I was not forced to do, and nor were any of the graduates to come before you. My big takeaway is that you have been forced to maintain community and maintain connection, two things that are vital to my existence in ways that I cannot imagine. You see, for me, when I graduated college, it was an in-person graduation and we all walked out into the world and got our first jobs. And naturally I you know, met new coworkers and got my first paycheck and I was connected naturally to human beings, uh, something that has been taken away from all of you over the past year. And what happened for me is my life took a little bit of a turn. I was diagnosed with a brain tumor and that led to me experimenting with uh, drugs in a way that I never could have imagined to the point where at age 27, I was in a very dark, dark place. And to be honest with you, I wasn't sure if I wanted to live or if I wanted to die. I was forced into isolation, much like many of you have been over the past year. And for me, what happened was I entered into a, a drug and alcohol treatment center out in Pennsylvania in Reading, close to all of you in York. And I surrendered. I surrendered much like all of you have had to surrender over the past year. I had to set aside all that I thought I knew about the world and life. And I had to listen to the other people around me. But most importantly, what I needed to do was I needed to focus on community I needed to focus on connection, and I really needed to learn what those two things meant to me and how they were going to play a role in, in my life. And what ended up happening was I took a leap of faith, and I landed in New York City, and I knew nobody. I had zero friends. I didn't have a job. I was forced, like many of you are going to be forced to do, to connect with people that I didn't know. And I was forced to find community. And it was hard and it took me some time. But eventually I, I dug deep and I, I, I was able to accomplish those things. And today, almost 10 years later, I'm happy to tell you that my life is insane. It is beyond my wildest dreams. And I tell you all of this because there was a time when I was not sure what was going to happen. There was a time where I felt sorry for myself, much like many of you have probably felt sorry for yourself over the past year. But I had to keep moving forward. I had to get creative. I had to problem solve. And it's for these reasons and my direct experience on this planet why I'm so confident that the class of 2021 and the students that I, that I sit here and you know, speak to through this video in a, in a Zoom world, um, I was forced to kind of look at this thing in two ways. And I could say, well, I don't really know if I wanna be the commencement speaker. I wanna be there in person. I wanna see these students. I wanna see the smile on their faces. I wanna hug them. Or as I started, I could, take this opportunity and try to make the most of it. My challenge to you is to try to find some hope in my story, 
and to understand that much like you, at one point in my life, I was feeling very sorry for myself. Now, my college experience wasn't disruptive, but my life was. And I had to go back to the basics. I had to find ways to connect. I had to find my community, much like you all have done for the past year. And you all will be forced to do as you walk out into the real world. So my challenge to you is to wear this, this Corona COVID-19 existence like a badge of honor. Use it to your strength. Go out there and use some of these new tools. Send the text message home. FaceTime your mom. I never FaceTimed my mom until Corona. And then when the world starts to open back up again, jump back into giving people hugs, looking people in the eye, communicating effectively, and just doing the best you can with life. Knowing that you've been through something, you've been through something together, you have this common bond. The class of 2021 has this common bond that you will share forever and forever. Because the good news is, I can promise this, this is a guarantee, this world is coming back. It is going to come back bigger and better and stronger than ever. And we are gonna need all of you as leaders in, in, this, in this world to steer us in the direction of success. So I'm super excited to see what this class does. I'm super excited to be here with you today. I know the world is going to heal. It's just some pain and some struggle that we are all walking through together. And so with that, I want to say thank you for having me. Remember to connect. Remember to tell the people closest to you in life that you love them. Mm. And cheers to the class of 2021. Hey, there it is, folks. Zach Clark, commencement speech at his alma mater, York College of Pennsylvania. And just to piggyback off of Zach, connection and community. I got to I got to remind you guys the gratitude I feel in my heart from this year is the community that you guys have given me. The chance you've given me to make my live streams a job, something I can show up to and talk to you guys in a way that it gives me a group of people to talk to in a world where for the last 15 months Tasha and I have just been alone in our rooms, <laughs> alone in our apartment, and the human condition needs eye contact. It needs oxytocin. It needs touch. It needs that community. And so often when so many bad things happen, it's because we've been isolated, ostracized, canceled, or whatever the case may be. Even with people like Colton Underwood, who clearly has demons in a world where he was living alone, away from his family, excommunicated by getting, uh, you know, going through whatever his issues are. He's an example of someone who could have used a friend. Didn't happen. Hopefully he's got that friendship now. Not an excuse, but you can see the symptoms where bad things happen. Suicide and other issues. Mental Health Awareness Month is about finding the strengths to know when you need help. The strengths to know that you need to ask other people for help. To call your family and let them know you're struggling. Too often we put on this brave face on Instagram and other social media like I'm doing the best. I'm hanging in there. You don't need to have the strength to hang in there. You need to have the strength to let people know that you need that you need them, that you need that community. And then they'll help you hang in there and check in on you. So make sure to find your community and do whatever you can to hold on to the normalcy as we venture back into the world. I went to a, my first barbecue this weekend. It was amazing. I haven't been to a barbecue in like a year. I haven't been able to see a lot of my friends. And I know not everyone's done the social distancing, whatever. Some people just live their normal life, but a lot of people, you know, living with someone who's got, um, you know, Lyme disease. So I'm trying not to, you know, complicate any of her health conditions and this and that, you know, we've done, we've done our part to distance ourselves from others. And we've had to find that community online. I appreciate you guys for helping me find that community. I did want to shout out my Patreon community. You guys have doubled in subscribers. These are all the cards I'm sending out today. These are postcards um, for all the new members of the Patreon. And if you don't know, it's a membership community. I got to plug this at the end. I've been posting weekly 
um, extra episodes. And this is actually some tea I'll show you guys that uh, one of the uh, uh, leads of the Bachelor Nation sent me uh, after roasting them on one of my videos. So if you want to know who that is, you can sign up for the Patreon. I got to keep some things behind the paywall. You know, that's not, I don't like to just share people's DMs, but that's a DM I got. If you uh, go to the Patreon, you can see who it is. Um, and then I've got all the other content over there. So thank you for all the people that have believed in me, joined that community. And if you want the free version, we got so much free content. Live stream at 4 p.m. today. But just remember, whether it's Katie Thurston, Tasha Adams, or Zach Clark, they've all got a message here. Tasha's is a message of hope. Katie's is a message of continued gratitude. And Zach's a message of finding that community. With all those things, you're going to be okay in life. And there's a lot to look forward to. I'll see you guys later on. Plenty of content coming. Thank you for liking this video, subscribing, and leave a comment. Bye, guys.